Hello and welcome. My name is Ken Sachs. I am the host of Real Estate Radio with Ken Sachs. However, today we're going to change things up a little bit. We are going to speak about Proposition 2 and the campaign against Proposition 2. My guest with me today is Michael Cathcart. He is the Executive Director of Better Spokane. Michael, welcome and introduce yourself. Yeah, you well, thank you for having me and uh, glad to be here to talk a little bit about Proposition 2 and why we are opposing it. Um, I am helping on the campaign against Prop 2 and I am Executive Director of Better Spokane. We're a, a nonprofit and a political action organization here in the city of Spokane. We're still kind of in our startup mode this year. Um, but the reason we exist is to help build a better business climate and a, a better community here in our uh, city of Spokane. Good, good. So Proposition 2, that's, uh, that's on the ballots here now. Uh, what is Proposition 2 and, and why are we against it? Well, uh, essentially Proposition 2 is a ban on the transport of coal and oil by rail uh, through the city of Spokane. Uh, there's some nuances there uh, uh, that they you know, are trying to, to push on us, but that is essentially what it boils down to, is a, a ban on the movement of coal and oil through the, the city. So Proposition 2 is to ban Correct. the movement of coal and oil. That's right. And being against Proposition 2, I'm then taking that as you are a you, – you, your position your, on yes. movement of coal and oil through the city is what? To, to keep it a, as it currently is. Okay. So uh, we, we feel that uh, coal and oil moves fine on the railroad as it is. We haven't had any uh, incidents in the city of Spokane in uh, decades with major rail accidents. Uh, we feel that the tracks are safe. The investments have been made by Burlington Northern and Union Pacific to make those tracks safe. And every every year they continue to invest hundreds of millions uh, in Washington state to make the tracks even safer than they are. And quite frankly, we feel that if you uh, decide that you don't want coal and oil traveling on the railroad, the alternative is actually a lot worse. Um, what would end up happening if, in fact, you were to ban the uh, uh, coal and oil using this measure? You would move coal and oil from the railroad to trucks. It would still transport through our community, but it would do so via semi-trucks. And when you've got 180 semi-trucks, uh, equaling one train of, of this material, uh, that's not a very good situation for congestion on our freeways, for um, the um, um, tearing up of our roads, for greenhouse gas emissions, which would increase 75% if this were to happen. So it's really all around just a bad plan to allow this to take place and to see coal and oil move to a, another mode of transport, which would be via the highways. So my question here is you explained how the tracks are safe, they're current, money's going into them. Yeah. There haven't been any incidences, any accidents uh, with the movement of coal and oil via the tracks. I, I, you know, call me old fashioned, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So why did this come up? Why is this coming up yeah. now? There's no issue. The issue is uh, you, you've got a small minority of activists okay. who uh, want to try to limit the use of fossil fuels. That's what this comes down to. If you are truly concerned about safety, you are not, one, you're not going to include coal in the measure. Um, coal does not explode. It doesn't burn up. It's an inert rock. Uh, two, you would include things like chlorine, like butane, like propane, like gasoline. And none of those are included in this measure. It is specific to oil. It is specific to coal. And the reason is they want to keep us from being able to uh, move those goods through Washington State, use those uh, uh, fossil fuels in Washington State, and sell those fossil fuels to China. Okay, so this has, what I'm hearing is, this has nothing to do with rail or transportation. This, is, this has to do with uh, a certain party's desire to limit our use of fossil fuels and how better to limit our use than to limit the supply and yeah. so to limit the supply, let's revise how it's being transported throughout the state? Yeah, it, it's a tactic, right? It's a, it's a tactic. Um, you know, you, you, you talk to some of these folks and, and, and really they'll tell you, well, we should, we should just stop using it all together and we should start using wind power and solar power and these things, which are great. I mean, the, the, they exist sure. and, and they're getting cheaper every day and, and eventually we'll move more and more in that direction. But until the market changes, we're, we're going to continue to use fossil fuels. And, and that's just kind of the way it is. But they're trying to sort of 
force the hand of the public by putting up these roadblocks. Um, and it just doesn't make sense. But the, the, the biggest thing I would point out in all of this is it's not legal. I mean, what they're trying to accomplish is simply not legal. In fact, if you talk to the city of Spokane's hearing examiner, who by ordinance is uh, required to review these measures uh, when they're put on the ballot mm -hmm. to make sure that they're constitutional and legal and all that, he has come back and said that this is not legally valid. And now he doesn't have the power to take it off the ballot. He just simply gives his opinion. Um, he's come back with that opinion. The uh, city council's own policy advisor has uh, ruled on a very similar measure, almost identical to this one, that it did not, uh, it was not likely to survive a legal challenge. And that's when the council had been pursuing this. Uh, Councilman Brian Beggs mm -hmm. on the city council last year had pursued this action, convinced enough other council members to go along with him. They were told it was illegal. They put it on the ballot anyway. Uh, and then finally, after they were convinced, hey, this is not going to end well, uh, uh, enough of them reversed course and said, well, maybe this isn't a good idea. And they took it off the ballot. But at that time, Brian McClatchy, the policy advisor, had given them that forewarning that this would not be legal. Um, in addition to that, I mean, there are voices all over the place saying this is not going to withstand a legal challenge. Uh, one that really needs to be pointed out is uh, Rick Eichstadt, the head of the Center for Justice. In fact, he has said that, um, um, you know, he's not sure that this is the right way to go simply because it probably will not withstand a legal challenge. Now, they haven't taken an official position either way on the issue, but that was an opinion that he rendered in, in an Inlander article a few weeks back. So there, there's folks on all sides of the aisle who have very strong concerns about the, the um, legality of this measure. And it's important to point out that um, once or, or if this were to pass, um, it would immediately we would immediately see lawsuits right from one side or the other if the city chose not to enforce it the folks pursuing this measure would sue the city to enforce it if the city did pursue um enforcement of this measure then the the other side would say well this isn't legal sure. you can't do that and they you have to take it off um you know off the books so the city's going to get sued which means the taxpayers get to fit right. that bill which means money gets diverted from things like streets like police things that we already can't take care of in this right. community, you know, we're struggling. We with. don't have enough of. Exactly. Yeah. And that money goes away and it gets diverted to the court system uh, rather than going to the services that we need to be spending money on. Okay. So, so devil's advocate. So we, uh, Prop 2 wants to change the, the method of transportation to trucks. Sure. Semis. Um, what's wrong with that? Well, they, they would say they they don't want to put them on trucks, but that's the unintended consequence of the measure. Right? How else would it get transported? Exactly right. Okay, so if if you take it off trains, right, it's got to go by one of two ways, either trucks or pipeline. We don't have a pipeline that goes through Washington State, right? And any suggestion of building a pipeline gets a very strong uh, rebuttal from the same folks sure. advocating against using rail for this. So the the only alternative is it's going to trucks. Um, now, if you don't do trucks, the, the other thing you could do is you could still put it on rail and you'd go down through the southern states, come up California to the port in Washington uh, over in Seattle that way. That sounds efficient. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great method of uh, transporting. Um, so and that's just probably not going to happen. Right. It'll it would end up the, the, the folks who own the coal and oil would would see that it's a lot cheaper to move it by truck than to do this long route. Now, there's another consequence okay. that I would bring up to that is you start re reducing the number of trains coming through our community and there's another unintended consequence which is there's now fewer um, opportunities for our manufacturers and our ag community to to get supplies and to get their goods to market uh, because now there's fewer trains coming through fewer opportunities to hitch their cars to those trains and move them where they need to go so and and then when they do have those opportunities they'll be more expensive to boot so it's really going to impact a whole lot of folks if in fact this were to pass and if it were enforced um and so you know we just don't think it's um the the best move to to vote yes on this measure we should be voting no yeah it kind of reminds me of uh you know what I, what i say oftentimes is ready shoot aim so yeah i want this okay we're against fossil fuels and so let's let's pass this proposition let's put this proposition on the ballot because that will uh, eliminate the transport via trains and rail. And so that's going to limit it. But I haven't thought beyond that. Yes. And what's going to then happen if that really does pass. And then I'm sitting with probably a bigger problem 
that yeah. I hadn't thought about because I just ready shoot and then okay, what am I? What did I just shoot? I don't know. I didn't aim yet. Sounds a little like some of the things our city council does. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're you're exactly right. And and one of the big issues I think the proponents of this measure would tell you is that they're concerned about are uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Sure. If you're truly concerned about greenhouse gas emissions, you're going to keep the coal and oil moving on trains where it's a heck of a lot greener than putting them on trucks where you're going to see a 75% increase in greenhouse gas emissions. So if that's your concern, you're going about this all wrong. I'm against fossil fuels and it's going to end up being transported via the highways. Right. And as you said, it's going to be more trucks, more semis, more burning of fossil fuels and emissions which goes completely against my reason for bringing up Proposition 2 in the first place. That's exactly now, this, it. This makes perfect sense to me, Michael. Now, I would um, just want one other aspect of this. Uh, so, you know, we re- refer to it as a ban because that's essentially what it is. Okay. Now, um, to be fair, what it, what it really truly is is a fine levied on every single car um, coming through carrying a substance that they don't like. Now, the substances they've identified is coal that's uncovered, um, which... By the way, they they use a glue like substance that holds the coal in place. You know, they've reduced dust by 92 percent. So it's not that is not an issue any further. The other is oil that is not uh, refined the way that they want it refined. So right now, uh, the oil that comes through is a a 13.8 PSI. They want to get it down to an eight. What our research has said to do that would cost in the billions with a B billions of dollars. Now. Um, again, you'd have to build new oil refineries to do this. And the folks advocating for this measure are the same folks that are not going to allow those oil refineries to get built, uh, to, to do the refining. But beyond that, the cost, if you do build them, the cost of doing this will get passed on to the consumer, which means we all get to enjoy yet another gas tax, this one hidden, right? Hidden in the price of the, of the oil. Um, so it gets passed on to the gasoline and, does it get us one more inch of road? Does it widen the north-south freeway? Right. Does it widen I-90 that's really congested? No, it doesn't do any of that. It just We just get the, the pleasure of paying more for the gasoline we use. I'm, just, I'm not seeing any sense in, no. uh, in any of this. Uh, so a few more minutes here. Any, anything else you've left out uh, about pros or cons or maybe some myths? How, how, are the, yeah. how are the proponents of Proposition 2, how are they selling it? to the community because I know oftentimes what we hear and when you kind of dig through and clear the smoke, wait, that's not what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they rely on the safety issue, right? Sure. I mean, everybody's concerned about safety. I'm concerned about safety. You know, when I drive on our roads, I'm concerned about the crazy guy that, you know, turns and shouldn't and hits me and causes an accident. So we're all concerned about safety. Um, but the, you know, the problem they're trying to fix is not one that exists. And, and that's just the fact. I mean, the best way to address this issue, if, if you're concerned about the, the coal and oil moving on the railroads, is to address it at the federal level. Go to Congress, go to the federal administration, and address it there. Um, they're the ones that can set rules for you know, the federal um, interstate system. You know, we don't need to violate the Interstate Commerce Clause of the U.S. Constitution to, to do this. Mm-hmm. We don't need a rule in Spokane that doesn't apply anywhere else that you know, creates this massive roadblock on a, a, a national railroad system. Sure. It just doesn't make any sense. Sure. Uh, so w- we just need to think through this a little bit further, be a little smarter about it, and, you know, try to uh, figure out a way that's not going to put our community at risk for these expensive lawsuits, you know, with Proposition 2. Good grief. So, again, the message is no on Proposition 2. That's the position. And you've heard from Michael Cathcart uh, all the reasons why – uh, why we are taking that position, uh, both here locally uh, as well as one of our sponsors, the Association of Realtors here in yeah. Spokane. Uh, Can I add one thing, too? Absolutely. So I think it's important to point out that there are a number of folks throughout our community that have come together to oppose Proposition 2, um, one of whom is is the Spokane Association of Realtors, and that's a, a great partner to have. Um, the others include the Spokane Home Builders Association, uh, Associated General Contractors, GSI, uh, Downtown Spokane Partnership. Uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on of, of, of folks around our community. Sheriff Knezovich has been a, a very outspoken um, leader on this issue. And, and we're really proud to have all that support and all these voices speaking out because it just does not make sense for our community. 
Oh, it sure doesn't sound like it. Where can I go if I'm listening to this? I don't want to yeah. find more information. Well, look, I encourage everybody, read both sides. Please do your due diligence before you cast any vote. That's really important. Remember, ballots are out right now, so you've got it in hand. If you haven't cast it yet, please fill it out. Please get it in. The sooner, sooner you get it in, the sooner you can get away from annoying election calls and <laughs> mailers and things like that. Believe me, they don't want to waste money on you if you've already voted. So they'll take you off the list. So vote early, you get off those lists. But um, for our committee specifically, you can go to protect Spokane's committee or protect Spokane's community.com. Um, got that right. Protect yeah. Spokane's economy. economy. Excuse me. Protect Spokane's economy.com. And you can uh, read a lot of the information there. You can visit the Facebook page. There's a lot of statements from local elected officials as to why they oppose this, why they think it's a bad idea. Um, and there's just a lot of information out there. There's been a number of news articles uh, recently on this issue. So please read it, digest it. And if you've got questions, there's contact information at protectspokanseconomy.com. Excellent. So protectspokanseconomy.com for more information. Again, uh, no on Proposition 2. My guest today, Michael Cathcart, thank you for coming yeah. in. And uh, again, Executive Director of Better Spokane. And I am Ken Sachs. And thank you for listening. And uh, until next time.